Next up we have the Tesla Model Y and it's Tesla's most affordable SUV. It's the rear wheel drive version. There are a couple of different aesthetic uh, differences on the outside of it, but pretty much you meet them on the road, you probably won't know whether it's an all-wheel drive, long range, an all-wheel drive performance, or if it is going to be this rear wheel drive version. The Tesla Model Y is starting to become the most popular Tesla globally and in a number of different markets is number one or number two of the best-selling electric vehicle in the market. So today we're going to be looking at what to expect, the outside, the inside, we're going to take it for a drive. And starting off with the outside and at the front is one of the differentiators that you will notice between whether it's the all-wheel drive, be that the long range or the performance, but with the rear wheel drive you don't get fog lights down in underneath here. But otherwise, aesthetically, it is this. Comes in three different trims, as I said. It is the rear wheel drive, the all wheel drive long range, and then the all wheel drive performance. Same pretty much otherwise. Uh, we have a frunk in underneath, and you have to go into the screen, or you can do it on the app on your phone as well. I just don't have the app on my phone for review purposes and we have 115 litres inside here for storage. It has the tow bar here as well if you didn't need to tow it. Or the tow eye hook, sorry. Um, and then some other elements, the ability to open it if somebody got trapped inside it. That's the front of it. You've got LED headlights. We don't have the fog lights on this version. You've got some air cooling and rate very much aero. Uh, some people are a fan of the looks of the squashed frog is what it's been known as. Uh, but otherwise, I think it is what it is. It's nice. A couple of different colors, white, black, blue, gray, and red. There is a green coming, I believe, in the new Giga factory in Berlin. Moving down along the side then, you have the Gemini wheels. You can get this in the all wheel drive long range and 19 inch, and then you can get the 20 inch induction wheels and then on the performance version you've got the uber turbines you've got some gray cladding along the top of the wheel arch you've got starting to see your cameras in around the place uh, these are retractable don't have blind spot on it but when you do hit the indicator a little camera vision pops up but we'll talk about that when we come inside gloss black with a kind of a glass cover on the actual B pillar, another camera in underside. Uh, the flush door handles that do cause people some issues when they're opening them. I've seen some taxis where they've actually put an aftermarket handle on it, just because if you're not used to it, now it's very simple. It's thumb, push, and open. Um, this Tesla Model Y is wider, longer, and taller than the Model 3, so a lot of families are going for people that just want extra space. Price in Ireland at the moment, it's coming in around 46,000 odd. In the UK, it's about £45,000. Another area that we have is on the rear left-hand side, and whether it's the right-hand drive or left-hand drive, the Tesla charging port is always on the rear left-hand side, and they've designed their charging stations for that. And you've got Type 2 AC and DC CCS here in Europe. I know there's the North American charging standard that's starting to roll out on AC 11 kilowatt and on DC on this long, sorry, on this uh, rear wheel drive version, maximum 170 kilowatt peak on the DC charging curve. That's talking 10 to 80% on a fast enough charger in about 25, 30 minutes. And then overnight in a wall box, about nine hours and 15 minutes if it's a seven kilowatt hour wall box. So plenty of capacity there as well. On the rear of the Model Y is another way of, defense, of understanding what the difference is between it because it doesn't have the all-wheel drive chrome badging on it. It does have the Tesla chrome badge on it, it has the LED brake lights, and the difference between this and the 3 is it's got a massive open and a massive hatch. So storage-wise you've got 500, sorry, 854 litres. This has got the new split tier end uh, parcel shelf, um, so lots of space in underneath. And if you put the feet seats down, it goes up to 2,100. So it's an absolute massive um, space if you're looking for space in an electric vehicle because it is that ground up easy. The other feature that we have in the back of the Model Y is you've got your 12 volt and you also have the ability to power drop down both seats. Giving you all that extra space. In the back of the Tesla Model Y, that seat is set for me, I'm 188 centimetres, there's two or three centimetres, maybe even four centimetres, a pocket shelf, I've got lots of room underneath and plenty thigh support as well. Two isofix, we've got a armrest with two cup holders in it, we've got a middle headrest as well, two USB type C's, some twin air vents, got lots of headroom because of that glass sunroof, about five or six centimetres. It's a frameless door and they're acoustic double paned. 
We've got a 13 speaker sound system throughout the car, a little button to open up the door as well, and one button to bring the window potentially not all the way down. Uh, up on top, you've got a coat hook and a courtesy light for reading. Yeah, you could see how people would be happy in the Tesla Model Y for a long distance, and the fact there's no floor uh, transmission tunnel. Now, would you get three of me in the back? It'd be tight, but even in the middle seat, I'm talking two or three centimeters and still plenty of leg room. So three adults in the back, if they weren't too wide. Another thing in the rear of the Tesla Model Y is you have the ability to increase or decrease the tilt or the rake on the actual seat. You can hear the actual motors engaging and disengaging. So that's fully reclined. And then if you needed extra space in the boot, you could actually lock them in there in a more upright position. Let's have a look on the front. Inside the Tesla Model Y, and this is where it starts to get a bit divisive, is up towards the front. Some people prefer to have a driver infant, inf uh, like an instrument cluster behind the steering wheel or even on the dash. Nothing like that, you can get aftermarket. There is no head up display either uh, for the Tesla Model Y. It's all controlled through this 15 inch screen. Uh, you've got a full menu with regards to um, everything is controlled through here. So if you want to open the glove box, if you want to change the actual steering wheel. So we're just going to car settings, go into pedals and steering, and then changing, sorry, controls, and then steering, and then it's all done through the actual turn screen, in, out, up, down. And then if you want to change the wing mirrors, that's done through here as well. Uh, left, up and down, and then right, up and down, all done through this left toggle wheel. Otherwise, you can change the acceleration, but we'll talk about that when we're out for a drive. You've got two wires, charging pads. You've got a large cubby in here with two USB type C's, two cup holders, another cubby here in the glove box, which you have to open up through the actual settings as well. So controls and it's glove box that drops down. In there is a USB type A where you can actually store your sentry cam. Because of the cameras that go around the car, you can actually turn on um, sentry mode and you can exclude it from when you're parking at home or at work and how long those sentry clips. So it's like a built-in dash cam with a 360 version of it. You've got a little camera up here above the uh, clear frame or frameless uh, rear view mirror and that's all to do with autonomous driving if and when it comes. Glass sunroof from front to rear. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, very minimalistic interior. You can get two colors, a dark with this wood effect and then a white interior. And this wood panel then becomes a white panel then. Uh, you've got Spotify built in. You've got satellite navigation, which is currently run on Google Maps. Things change in Tesla overnight. So this has been released at the end of June, 2023. Prices are gonna be different. Spec is gonna be different. Over there, update can be done and you can actually go in and see if it's due um, your VIN number, how what your software version is, and if you want to actually um, download the latest update, you can update your pro profiles um, on the screen. And again, we'll talk about that when we're out. You can either have a percentage or an actual range. WLTP on the Model Y for the rear wheel drive is 455 kilometers. I'm getting near the 400, um, which is still good. And um, if you want to spend that extra, it's about seven or 8,000 euros to get to the next level up, the long range version. That is the interior of the Tesla Model Y. Let's take it out for a drive. Just got in out of the rain for filming. What's it like driving the Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive? When I started driving Tesla Model Ys initially, and I've had a couple of reviews on the channel, I felt that the suspension was a bit hard. It's probably still a bit on the firm side for me. And there are rumors that we will be getting air suspension at some stage. Um, this is a very uh, broken up alleyway here in Dublin. Uh, no, don't get me wrong, you're not being jolted around the place. And you can see on the camera there, when I indicate left, it shows the left hand B pillar camera. Handy for cyclists, etc. And then when I indicate right, it'll show me my right hand one. So, right is definitely on the firmer side. Seats are fully adjustable on both front and back, and you've got heated seats, heated steering wheel. You also have a HEPA filter, they call biohazard. I need to turn that off or you won't be able to hear me speak. You can move that around as well, which is handy if you are doing stuff on screen. The Model Y long range has a CATL LFP 
uh, lithium ion phosphate, um, 60 kilowatt hour battery uh, with 57.5 kilowatt hours of that usable. We don't get any official stats from Tesla on battery size or performance. They don't give that kind of information out. Um, the only thing they give you is the WLTP, which is 455, and as I said, I'm getting near the 400 mark. It's a 220 kilowatt motor, giving 299 PS and 420 newton meters of torque. One of my niggles with Tesla is the wipers. It's either, I'll show you here, and the fact that you have to go into the actual so controls and we go to uh, so we've got off we've got stage one stage two stage three stage four and then automatic and if you don't like any of those stages and you're not happy with the automatic there is nothing really you can do about it you can press in once and it will wipe um but if you have to constantly keep doing that so the adjustability on the wiper is probably something that also you don't have apple carplay and android auto so if you are in that ecosystem you have to make do with the satellite navigation that's built in with tesla uh, you can't have any of your ways app that i use a lot when I, as an android owner so it, that might turn some people off as well so but now the satellite navigation is very good and it calculates what your battery is going to be like uh, if you were to put in a um so if i say i'm going to the supercharger in dublin also when you put in that supercharger in dublin it starts to precondition you can see at the top here preconditioning the battery for fast charging uh, and it'll say i'm currently at 46 percent battery and it'll take six percent of my battery to get there Price in Ireland at the moment is 46,521 for cash. There's PCP, et cetera, prices. And then it gives you the price of if you include the savings on the running of a Tesla, i.e. an electric vehicle. So it's it, sometimes people get a bit confused with the pricing. And in the UK, it's 49,990. So around that mid 45,000, you can hear that battery preconditioning. Now if I end the trip, that'll come away because it knows I don't need to be at a certain temperature be that increase or decrease at the moment it's 22 degrees outside very clammy just had a shower of rain sound system is good visibility is very good front and side to side wing mirrors are a decent size it'd be nice if there was blind spot detection on them but you do get that middle little camera little, little light or little bong there to say that the light has gone green as a reminder and if there's a car in front of you and it pulls away it'll also remind you that the car in front has pulled away power or performance of the rear wheel drive tesla model y it is the slowest tesla with a zero to 100 of seven seconds which isn't slow in my mind i think it's torquey enough i think there's plenty of power in it now if i spend my own money what would i go for probably would go for the long range just to have that extra peace of mind uh, but would this do me absolutely would this suffice absolutely 400 kilometers you're getting coast to coast uh, and with that supercharger network which you have around the country uh, there are six locations i've done a video on my channel uh, where uh, belfast two on the m1 etc etc they're spread pretty much along the east coast uh, in the west we have one in athen Roy, and then we've got one in cork in man point and then one in um, balacola and in Bird Hill, apologies as well, on the way into Limerick. So the West and the Northwest could do with a supercharger network if Elon is watching, but uh, he has enough going on at the moment with, uh, after announcing that Model Y and Model S aren't going to come in a rear wheel drive. So Elon, if you watch my videos, you have a tweet there back with Paul Kelly at Short World, and um, he is wondering if he can get a right hand drive Tesla Model Y. Or sorry, X, apologies. X and S aren't going to come in right-hand drive currently. Uh, in other markets, this does come in a seven-seater, but currently it's not available outside of the North American market with a seven-seater option. So just be conscious of that if you are looking for a seven-seater. That will drastically eat into your um, boot space if that's what you're looking for, but you don't need to worry about that. It is five-person, five uh, five-seater at the moment. So in the rear, you can see you can heat up all three seats separately and th multiple levels as well. So it's not like they're just on or off. Very good. Oh, there was an all off there as well. 
three different ways of getting into the Tesla Model Y. You can have the key card, which I get as a press driver. You can utilize the app as well. And if you really want a physical key fob, you can get a key fob in the shape of a Tesla um, that will allow you to open it, but also open the front uh, and open the boot, I believe, depending on the number of clicks. So number of different ways and that app functionality the ability to look at the sentry cameras via the app precondition heat or cool it also has a pet mode with the voice assistant some of the commands that you can give it is like make it cooler make it warmer cool down the passenger direct the airflow in my face turn on the driver's seat heater fold the mirrors open the glove box so there's lots of different, and I'll put the full list in the description in the actual video underneath if you're interested in some of the commands that you can use via voice control. The over air updates is probably a huge selling feature for Tesla and other brands are jumping in on that. So it has connectivity itself within the car and as firmware gets developed, uh, things get spotted, things get improved. Uh, the ability to move that camera when I indicate, um, and I'll do it up here as I'm indicating, and so if I move it here, I can move it down, I can move it over, I can move it here. All of that was done over the air. Um, so you don't need to go into your Tesla garage. And if you do need something fixing or sorting out or a safety check on your Tesla, they have that mobile technician or ranger service. There is a video up on my channel and you can go and have a look at that just to see if you're based in a part of whatever country you're watching this in. And please leave a comment below and let me know what country you're watching this in. You may be a number of hours from your local Tesla service center. Like in Dublin and Ireland, it's currently the only one. There is opening a second one. They are opening a second one in Cork, but um, I had spent a day with Steve uh, on that mobile technician um, ranger uh, service and it was phenomenal. Great to see what you can do out and about and the things that he could do uh, in a mobile capacity. Tesla's a technology company and they make cars really is what it boils down to. Uh, we haven't had uh, the ability for full self-driving. You do have um, cruise control, uh, and then lane keep, etc. Hopefully you've enjoyed my look around the Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive. There's a drive on the channel to get to 15,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you have already subscribed, leave a comment and let me know whether why you went for the Tesla, why you didn't go for the Tesla. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.